Your Father, that's our heart, that's our heart's desire, that's the intent as we gather in this place today, that you be the central focal piece of it all. Dear Father, we thank you, we love you, we adore Jesus, and today in this place, we uh, desire to live that name which is above every name, the name of Jesus. We thank you that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Lord, today we celebrate who Jesus is in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, take this opportunity to welcome everyone to venue this morning. Good to see you on this Lord's Day, right in the middle of July. It feels like it on the outside, doesn't it? Good to see you here today. Uh, just a few announcements. We, uh, the Deacon Leadership Team met this week, and uh, we are continuing the same schedule through the month of July. So that means uh, we'll be in here on Sunday mornings at 10.30. Uh, we will have the life group in the fellowship hall Sunday mornings at 9.30. And we'll be on Facebook Live and YouTube on Wednesday nights. And also on Sunday mornings, we're on both of those outlets as well. So all of that's going on. But we continue to have really good uh, Facebook uh, um, uh, and response and also YouTube response. Last Sunday morning was the high since we started. Uh, somewhere in the 450 range. So we praise God for that and thank uh, everyone that uh, tunes in and, and listens at least to a portion of it uh, planting those seeds. So to God be the glory. Okay, so uh, all of that's going on. I remind you that Sunday we will, uh, uh, we will uh, have the confirmation vote. I guess that's what we call this vote. Only two deacon nominees. Uh, you uh, nominated two guys to serve as deacon for the next three years, her and Harry. And so, and Harry will ordain him sometime between now and September. We'll do uh, a socially distance uh, um, laying on of hands, and we've got all that figured out. So, uh, so that'll be uh, that'll be interesting. Uh, but it's going to be a good service. We'll do that sometime before September. Uh, so again, we do welcome you today. Uh, it's good to see you when you turn and sing this first congregational hymn. Uh, just turn and wave at somebody. Uh, welcome them that way this morning. God bless you. Good to see you. We're going to have great worship today.
vento.
Amen.
about the future. And one of the things that God has revealed about the future is that this world is on a collision course with judgment. There is coming a time that the Bible describes as the great tribulation or the wrath of the Lamb. When Jesus was on earth, he talked about the great tribulation. There is coming a time on earth like no other time in the history of the world. We think that it's bad today. We think that 2020 is unprecedented. We ain't seen anything yet. Jesus said that the church is salt and light. And when the church is raptured, salt and light will be taken out. Can you imagine salt and light being removed from this earth? When the salt is taken out, uh, actually, uh, things begin to rot. They're not preserved. When the light is taken out, darkness ensues. When the church is taken out, we will enter a time called the Great Tribulation on the path of the Lamb. In the book of Revelation, uh, I want us to know that the Lord Jesus Christ receives a scroll from the hand of God the Father. Now, this scroll contains seven seals. We read about six of them this morning in this text. As the seven seals are open, we see the great tribulation beginning. Revelation 6 deals with much of this and introduces a time on earth unlike any time we've ever seen or will see. So what I want to do this morning is unpack these six seals and help us to understand what is coming this world's way. But I got good news for you. Like I preached on Wednesday night, I really believe that the church will not be here when Revelation 6 takes place because the church has been raptured out in Revelation 4.1. So let's jump into the text tonight. The first seal. When we hear thunder, we know that a storm is coming. The four beasts in this passage really comes from a word that we get the word zootrop. It means living ones. The four beasts will have special characteristics and we read about them in Revelation 6. The scripture says that they will be beasts like a lion, a cat, a man, and an eagle. These descriptions are symbolic. Uh, the living ones may well be cherubim, the highest class of angels. Uh, they deal with grace. They deal with glory. They deal with the government of God around his throne. The first beast has the face like a lion. This speaks of the majestic nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, we've sung about his majesty in this place this morning. What a majestic God we serve. Jesus is majestic. The second beast has the face like an ox or a cat. When we think of an ox, we think of servitude. We think of sacrifice. This deals with the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ministry that he will have upon this earth. The third beast has a face like a man. This speaks of the humanity. Jesus was the God man. He was as much man as though not God, as much God as though not man. But this image speaks of the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fourth beast has the face like an eagle, and this speaks of the deity of Jesus Christ. He is God. He is fully God. He's the Lord God Almighty, and He's Almighty in 2020, just like He was Almighty in the book of Revelation. The rider on the white horse is the Antichrist, the man of sin. A white horse is a symbol of a conqueror. The bow in his hand symbolizes power. The crown on his head symbolizes dominion. As the seals begin to open, the rider comes in public circumstance and power, and he is ruling. This rider cannot be the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus is shown in Revelation 19, coming on white horse, the rain and rule. The rider in Revelation 6 is the 
Antichrist, the imitator of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that prefix anti, I told you last weekend, means against or instead of. The Antichrist will be the devil's false messiah. Jesus prophesied of this false messiah that would come to the world and that the world would wander after. You see the delusion, you see a lie will come upon the face of this world and they will be gullible and they will grab it, hook, line, and sinker. The Antichrist will come like a hero. We know that. He will seemingly bring about world peace. We know that. And the world will follow him. He will be the world's superman. He will be Caesar's, all of Caesar's, Napoleon's, Hitler's, Stalin's, Saul Hussein's, right up in the wall. Can you imagine the Antichrist? Well, that's the first seal that's broken. And by the way, when the seals are broken, they advance in, in severity. They get worse and worse and worse, the second seal. When a devil-inspired leader appears on the world scene, with an ideas of world conquest, war and destruction will follow. This is the reason for the red horse in the passage, second seal. The color red symbolizes blood. The Lord Jesus said, in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars. The Bible does not prophesy that the world will get better. Every now and then I hear someone say, well, we're getting better. We're not getting more better, we're getting worse. Now I got news for you this morning, friend. This is not a jump, stop, and hallelujah message, but the world is not going to get any better. When the end cry, by the way, by the way, if you hear someone say it's going to get better, they are wrong. When the end
every soul saved during the tribulation. These people will pay a great price when they turn to God during the great tribulation. When they refuse to take the mark of the beast, they will become objects of Satan's hatred and wrath. It will be a time of great persecution upon the saints in the tribulation. You know what the chief weapon of Satan will be during the tribulation? Decapitation. He can't destroy your soul, but he'll destroy your body. Somebody says, and I've heard this often, well, when the rapture takes place, I know it, and I'll get saved in. No, you won't. The Bible says a strong delusion. God will send a delusion upon the rise, and you'll believe a lie. That's why it's so important that this morning, you get it down this morning, you make true on this morning, you don't leave here with any doubts that you're a Christian because if the rapture happens before we show up again next Sunday, I want you to be with me around the throne of God in heaven. Glory. Anyone who's heard the truth and turned from the truth will believe a lie. You say, well, you say so. We say, yeah, life goes on. Babies continue to be born. People grow up. They, they age over the accountability age, and, and many of them will accept Jesus during this time. Well, let me go to a six seal this morning. And then I'm going to wrap things up. Come out of the old stretch. Let's look at the sixth seal. There will be severe disorders on the earth and in space. Need to read about it. The forces of nature will nature will be let loose upon the ungodly. Those who have on earth through the great tribulation, those who have been uh, who have spurned and refused the Lord Jesus, God will unleash wrath upon them. By the Lord Jesus, all things consist. Jesus Christ holds all things together. Amen? What would happen if the Lord relaxes his grip on nature just a little bit? Things would spin out of control. There will be a great earthquake that will be found around the world. The light of the sun will be shut out. The word star in this passage has the idea of a heavenly body. Stars will fall to the earth. Asteroids will hit the earth. This passage speaks of heavens departing like a scroll. Being rolled up like a scroll. A nuclear blast in the atmosphere can push air out and cause a vacuum. When the air rushes back in, to that vacuum, the heavens didn't roll upon themselves. Whew. Have you noticed what goes on in this text? Uh, they reject the rock of ages and pray to the rocks. They will pray to the forces of nature rather than praying to the Creator. Even in that darkest moment upon the earth, they will still reject the God of this world. The God who sent Jesus, the God that for so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. They won't pray. To the God of this world, but they will pray to nature. And the forces of nature. And the rocks and the caves. And they will want to die, but can't die. Let me say something, though. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The great tribulation is coming. But there's a way out. There's a way out. Let me give you some 
application. I can't just preach about these six seals and not help you leave. By the way, if you're listening by Facebook Live, listen carefully to these points of application.
time. 